Uh, I appreciate the uh, previous two speakers for talking the basics of reinforced learning, so I can kind of skip a lot of details. So in this talk, I'll talk about, the, I'll give a very quick overview of what I think is important as uh, things to consider if you want to do reinforced learning in the real world, and say particularly robotics kind of applications. So as we know, there's been a lot of success in deep reinforcement recently. So a lot of kind of reinforcement in core research started more like Alberta, Rich Sutton's work, Andrew Barto quite a few years ago. But only recently in the past, say, four or five years, that's been really kind of applied to the scale kind of problems with neural networks. And they've been very successful for solving a lot of computer games, say the, the famous Go, and some kind of uh, very interesting kind of locomotion stuff in simulation. But a lot of the, the success has been mainly in the, the simulation, where you can get the samples very cheaply and fast, and really kind of don't, still don't see like kind of major practical kind of application reinforcement for the real world, say application like robotics, like recommendations are driving car, or kind of problems where the simulation is very expensive and slow. So my talk is really kind of focusing on how can we bridge the gap and how can we take those to those kind of domains. So I'll kind of very briefly describe why I'm interested in robotics particularly. So obviously there's kind of reason of kind of maximizing product the kind of human kind of efficiency in the real world. But another kind of uh, motivation for me is this kind of toward AGI. So in, it is true that when we look at the results on games and the kind of AlphaGo, it's very impressive. But when we kind of look at what we can do in the real world with continuous control, a lot of actuations, uh, main degree of freedom, I think it's quite uh, impressive what uh, some of the continuous control can bring. For example, this is basically orangutan. That's basically like making a hammock. And it basically like just uses hands with the kind of nice tie knots. And it's going to basically kind of try to go in there after it kind of ties it. So imagine if you try to use like Epsilon Greedy to run this kind of policy, it's almost impossible. I mean, how can we, this kind of exploration in the continuous control space is much crazy. So when I see something like this, then if we can kind of have robots kind of figure out some kind of policy like this, this is my personal bias opinion, but I feel that gets us closer to this kind of AGI. So it basically gonna figure out it's too small, so it's gonna untie it, retie it, and then put it in, and then it succeed. But it's just pretty amazing watching like this. So I would describe what I think as necessary recipe toward a smarter kind of reinforcement algorithm. Because I think if you kind of learn with like infinite data, it's kind of boils down to pretty much kind of exhaustive search. And don't really know if the algorithm is smart or just we have a lot of computations. So I think the core foundation we need is to have an algorithm that can learn very simple efficiently and stably. And of course, it has to scale to solve hard problems. And once you have the algorithm, you can, as I'll describe later, you should automate the learning procedure. Currently, as I described, a lot of the reinforcement learning procedure actually requires a lot of human intervention in kind of different ways. And uh, we should kind of reduce this. If you want to have an agent that kind of learns in the wild and that can kind of scale without human supervision. And once you have those two important foundations, I think we can talk about how can we improve reliability of the kind of learning of the different policies. So uh, the outline of the talk, I'll talk about this first foundation, sample efficiency. I'll talk toward good of policy algorithm, model-based algorithm. Those are the algorithm reinforcement learning that can utilize all the experience you have done in the past, rather than this so-called on-policy algorithm that only you look at the current stuff as actually kind of relate to uh, the thing that Mohammed just mentioned. And I'll talk about how to automate this learning procedure. How can you take the humans out when, as the machine's learning? And I'll talk about this hardcore reinforcement. This is one of the important topic as we try to solve harder problems in RL. So um, very basic stuff. So. Um, Kind of intuitively, say the reinforcement is basically trying to reinforce based on the outcome. Uh, basically, try to based on the outcome of different actions, reinforce the actions that led to better outcome. So, what does it kind of become mathematically? So, it, at very at a very high level, what it becomes is like say agent at state st. It takes different actions, and for the action, kind of evaluate what that action kind of leads in the future outcome. So, one way is basically just do, take that action to the very end and observe the, this kind of future return you observe and use that to provide feedback. Another way is you can use this kind of off-policy learning to learn this uh, critic function, this QW, to approximate what the future outcome will be if you follow the policy pi after you take the action A. And you basically, based on that, whatever that leads to better Q function, you basically reinforce it. 
So the red one that relies on sample is called on-policy method, and green one that relies on the critic is called like off-policy method. And because we want sample efficiency, we're gonna focus on this off, how to improve this off-policy method, which a lot of time depends on this. You can approximate this QPI pretty well. well um, and then this algorithm kind of called DDPG is one of the first few to do for continuous control domain. And as we can see, there's a, some problem with this algorithm given how much follow-up work there's been for this better DDPG algorithm over the past few years. And, but let me describe kind of one of them, which is kind of my work. Um, so this normalized advantage function two years ago, we basically kind of changed this uh, two objectives. So it's optimizing for like Q function, also use that for policy, but it basically has two kind of nested optimization. What we do here is basically we just make sure the change the form of Q function such that one optimization is done analytically. So you just have one optimization. So that automatically reduces the hyperparameters by half. And we basically kind of found for a lot of, for some of the domains, say, kind of this kind of manipulation kind of stuff, which is smooth, we found a much faster convergence, uh, sample efficient learning than prior method, and this is a result from two years ago that it can basically train like same degree of freedom arm with a hand to grasp like a stick in the air and then put it to the target. And we also kind of scaled this to show in the real world learning. So we run this algorithm, some variant of it, to uh, teaching robot to open a door. So this is kind of different from a lot of kind of prior work in that it doesn't involve any demonstration. It just involves like this one reward function. And just by maximizing reward function, within two and a half hours, with two robot arms, you can learn to basically open the door relatively robustly. And all the learning is just down the real hardware. There's no simulation involved. So this kind of stuff really show that some of the algorithms are really sample efficient toward the real um, kind of real world learning. And I'll also describe, uh, describe briefly about this model-based approach. So this is kind of gets a bit to the kind of detailed things, but say, for example, when you learn a Q function, then Q functions only learn respect to uh, one reward. So that reward is some task reward. But what you can do is you can parameterize the reward function as say you wanna, your reward function is reaching a goal specified by G. And what you can do is the amazing thing about off-policy learning is that you can use the same samples, same transition you're observing on memory uh, to learn for infinite number of goals. So you basically want to solve to reach here uh, in your exploration, but then you can use that experience to learn to reach in all the other places by just kind of rewriting the memory as you're training. And the nice thing here is you can actually draw a very close analogy with this model-based approach, which basically learns the model dynamics. Because if you know, like if you learn this Q function, basically what you learn is that you learn um, is this state reachable, say within like five time steps. And if you have that, you can do this sort of uh, model-based planning. So you basically want to uh, plan every say five time steps or 10 time steps. And you can do uh, this temporary abstract model-based. And in this paper, we basically show that that improves sample efficiency without going to kind of details on that. But overall, like here, we kind of describe there are multiple ways to make algorithm very sample efficient, and we should do a lot of research on that. So now I have shown that uh, there is this, uh, the results. So I've shown the door opening results, two and a half hours, two robots, it's not bad. So how come a company like Robot, uh, Google is not scaling up to 100,000 robots and just like learning all the manipulation skills? And this is because currently a lot of the, the experiment setup requires actually a lot of human intervention. So you gotta uh, basically ensure the reset. Most of the reinforcement learn episodic settings. So in the real world, that uh, basically means after each episode or trial, you gotta have someone or some hard-coded program reset the robots. You also typically need to spend a lot of time per task to design the reward function such that the, the algorithm can learn smoothly. But overall, basically, it involves a lot of human engineering. What we want is more this kind of uh, natural, kind of almost human learning with very little supervision, maybe sometimes uh, with some small feedback. But you want to really automate the learning process as a kind of baby in the room, just playing around with different things, uh, uh, kind of unattended. So, uh, we have some work toward the structure, and one's called Leave No Trace from uh, some famous event. And uh, here, basically, what we do is kind of simple. Um, we basically want to learn that uh, as you learn your task controller, you also learn how to reset back to the initial state. It's a very kind of simple idea, and you can do it kind of quite efficiently using off policy learning. And basically, what you do is basically, robot just try it, go back, try it, go back by itself. So we can kind of imagine that if this really kind of works and kind of push to the limit, 
we can have, say, robot in your house, and you kind of go outside the house in the morning, and then you come back, you don't notice any difference. The robot has kind of moved all around stuff, but moved back so you don't ever notice the robot is running. So it's kind of interesting toward that kind of autonomous running, but just kind of saving the PhD's valuable time from us. Um, and another kind of direction about this reward engineering. So a lot of times when we talk about solving reinforcement learning, we design, we spend a lot of effort designing reward function per task. So like one reward per task. But if you can have like one this kind of generalized reward function, that if you just optimize that, you can learn many, many skills, then that really kind of save us from having to engineer the, the reward. So there are a few work toward this direction. So one, this like temporal difference models I described a few slides earlier is one way toward that. This kind of goal condition value function is very nice because with one simple function and some simple distribution, you can learn kind of infinite set of skills. You can reach anywhere, can move anywhere. And uh, this kind of di there's also some other work for encouraged kind of diversity. So you basically want to make sure that um, each kind of policy from like a sampled latent is distinguishable from each other. And just by imposing the simple diversity stuff, here's the kind of results from my previous collaborator that uh, you can basically learn this kind of stuff without any manual reward specifications. So I think there's very interesting work to be done here that's often kind of underestimated. But with those kind of things, we can really try to make a step toward applying this reinforced learning algorithm to the real world. So I'll finally talk about kind of last point, which is kind of once we have those kind of two components, how can we like, what are other stuff we should have to learn more robust policy or solve harder problems? And one kind of thing I talk about is hardcore reinforcement learning. So when we can try to solve a task in the kind of classic reinforcement learning, you're basically given the control kind of step. So you basically make decisions, say, every few seconds. But then if you want to do that to say go from like a Berkeley to like San Francisco bridge, then like every few seconds you make the decision, that, that's a very long kind of planning problem. The better thing is you basically learn abstraction. You learn abstraction, temporal abstraction, such that you make the decision, say every one hour or every kind of event. So you kind of make the next decision once you reach this goal and you make another decision. Um, basically we want to develop uh, kind of efficient algorithms for learning to do this. And I really want to emphasize the efficiency because there are a lot of prior work that work on this hardcore reinforcement learning. There are a lot of times they kind of ignore the, this kind of efficiency because they just work on simulation. But in our work, we try to focus on this efficiency along with learning this hardcore policies. So the work we did is this, uh, called uh, HIRO. So it's basically like off policy hardcore reinforcement learning based on this go conditioned uh, policy as a sub policies. So basically, each time the two levels of policy, lower level is basically just the goal reaching policy. So given the goal from the high level policy, you basically just reach the goal. And it's executed for some time steps. In the high level goal, every, say, few kind of time steps, you make the decision. So you can act like more slowly. And you basically just give the goal for the lower level to execute. And this kind of simple parameterization was some of the kind of proposal for making this work with off policy learning algorithm have led to a pretty efficient um, of policy kind of hardcore algorithm compared with a lot of the previous baselines. So here's basically the ant that's trying to kind of push the block to accomplish the, uh, basically reach some goal. So you can basically push the block to make the bridge to go over. You can push the block sideways to reach the goal, etc. And then here we also have kind of visualization of what the hardware policy is giving as a, the goal for the slow level to kind of follow. And we also have some extensions that we submit to a, NIP, uh, yeah, a conference recently. And it basically kind of combines with representation. In the prior work, we used the xy kind of coordinate of the ant as a kind of ground truth measurement. But here we just have like a kind of top level image around the ant as, a, as an input. And basically, based on some principle of representation learning with some bound on suboptimality we can actually learn very good uh, representation. So the, those kind of thing that kind of follows a nice curve is what, what's learned with our method or ground truth. And the, the things below is the representation from kind of some of the prior kind of methods. But we can basically now make it work with kind of high dimensional. And because we kind of build on this prior work of efficient of policy hardcore reinforced mining, the overall of this algorithm is also quite efficient at solving this kind of hard tasks. Okay, so 
basically in this talk, I give a very kind of fast, kind of quick overview of what I think is important components to toward uh, kind of basically making reinforcement learning work for the real world. And I mentioned some of the kind of prior work I did, how it fits in this kind of paradigm. But also, there's just a lot of other work that's necessary to kind of make it. So this kind of like uh, interoperability with human feedback, this kind of natural language is very interesting. How to make the policy the square where is also a very interesting uh, research topic. And how do you say like uh, learn across multiple tasks like transfer learning is also very important. And while well, kind of emphasized, but there's also a lot of very cool work for simulation. So basically learning is purely in simulation, just transferring to real world. So of course those kind of things help. So if you have those, we can use that bootstrap. But in the end, what I kind of believe is, as I kind of, we've seen the kind of orangutan example, if you want to really learn this kind of rich, learning this rich world with no human engineered kind of structural rules, and uh, this kind of precision um, that's not in a lot of physical simulators, I think we should try to aim toward uh, leveraging around the real world and like launch thousands of those robots to the real world and uh, learn what we want. So thank you very much for inviting and uh, here are a lot of my collaborators and I'm open for questions.